I'm Scott Allen Miller, it's the 20th of November 2022, and this is my vlog of daily life in Leon, Nicaragua, and today I'm experimenting with a lot of new things, including filming on the 45mm at f2.0. I am hand holding the Tascam to see how the audio sounds by doing it this way as opposed to having it on a stand or something. This gives me a little bit more control. I can also do things like this so you can see what it looks like as I'm recording. And uh, we <laughs> let off. I really want to add some more dynamic content, and I'm still at a point where my foot, when I go out, it feels like pinched nerves or something. It's really, it's pretty pretty sharp as I as I step out uh, to do any walking. So for the most part, it feels kind of like a pinched nerve thing. So it's not a big deal, but yeah. So I hope you like the eggnog intro. You know it's the Christmas season coming around and Thanksgiving's coming up soon when you start having eggnog on the shelves everywhere. Actually, we saw it in Costa Rica when we were there a couple of weeks ago and I wanted to try it. Didn't get any there and saw some at the grocery store here and decided I needed to get it and try it out and it's quite good. Unlike the United States, most of the where most of the eggnog is non-alcoholic and you're expected to either just do without, which is weird, or add your own alcohol, which is okay and you can select your own alcohol that way, but that's awkward. Uh, here, when you get it, it already has the rum in it. Uh, hence the name that rum is in the name, but of course eggnog has rum in the name, but in the United States we often use whiskey. Here it's really always rum no reason to. In America, we often ignore the fact that grog means rum and act like it means anything, or we forget what it means at all. Uh, but uh, uh, eggnog, nog actually means rum. It is a linguistic throwback to Caribbean pirate days. So today, another day, yesterday, all day working on the videos. That was my focus. I very far behind, but this is a quiet weekend. So it's really been great. Yesterday was fantastic. Today I didn't do as much, but I still got lots of work done. Uh, my foot, like I said, still kind of bothering me. So I'm sticking it out here in the courtyard, but really enjoyed. I mean, it only took a little bit, but setting up the camera, doing some actual stuff and filming that little bit at the beginning. Uh, I really enjoyed doing that. And it's like, I'm getting into a little bit more than just the basic vlogging and wanting to learn some of those other techniques and add some fun to the channel. So as time allows, I'm gonna to try to fit some of that in a little bit. And that was a fun experiment. Uh, this evening, Liesl and I discovered that Living Dolls is available on YouTube, at least at the moment. So let me explain, because very few of you are going to remember this, even those of you who are my age. So in 1989, one of the hottest sitcoms of the 1980s was still going strong. That's Who's the Boss? You know, Tony Danza, Alyssa Milano, uh, and uh, Catherine Hellman. When uh, they wanted to kind of grow the channel a little bit, they took one of the characters who had been on that show, or maybe she was on that show because they intended to spin off eventually, but Leia Ramini was introduced on that show for a few episodes. She played a friend of Sam's, and I remember as a kid watching the show, so Who's the Boss was like my jam. Um, I had always loved it. It had always been uh, my favorite sitcom. It was my show of the 80s, and I remember it really... Uh, strongly because uh, it was 1984. It's the f it's probably the first sitcom that I saw from the beginning. Prior to Who's the Boss, I had seen Three's Company. I had seen Taxi. I had seen uh, Family Ties, things that were older, but they had always been shows that were on and that I got introduced to while they were on. Even Family Ties, because it started in 83, I believe. Even though I knew it from the beginning, I didn't know it as starting from the very first episode and going. With Who's the Boss, I remember it being a brand new show. It coming on, I think it was a Tuesday night. We'll say, that's probably not right. But my memory says it was Tuesday night at 8 o'clock. My father was going to watch TV. I said, is this something I can watch? I remember him saying, yeah, this is a show you can watch. And starting from the very first episode, I watched Who's the Boss basically its entire run not in reruns. I watched it as it happened all through the 80s, 1984 and on. And uh, Alyssa Milano from the show, my first television crush, I was eight years old. Uh, she was like nine years old. She's like one to two years older than me. Uh, and so that was that was my first like television crush. And uh, so, so Who's the Boss? That was my show. And I remember going to elementary school and friends, that was a show that a couple of us watched. Julie Hibbard watched that. We would always discuss the episodes uh, all through elementary school. Um, and it was just, it was, it was a huge part of my culture. That is the 80s to me in television was who's the boss more than anything else. 
And uh, so in 1989, they introduced Leia Ravini a few times, and then she got her own vehicle, which was this spin-off uh, backdoor pilot show, uh, Living Dolls, in which uh, she gets discovered by an agent in the Who's the Boss episodes, and then she gets goes off, and, and it's really loose, but Alyssa Milano shows up on the show, Tony Danza shows up on the show, and they do these crossovers. Only made it half a season uh, at the time. I remember it being this great show. I loved it. Right now, I look back and it's terrible writing. Um, but it's Leia Rimini who went on to you know Kings and Qu- King, King of Queens um, and other shows. She was a big star from that. And Halle Berry. That's actually the show that she came from, which I had no memory of. Watching it now, I'm like, oh my gosh, of course that's her on the show. But at the time, she was not a star yet. And by the time she became a star, I didn't really connect her to that show anymore. Uh, and that show went off the air and disappeared. So I've never been able to see it. Sadly, I've never been able to watch Who's the Boss Beyond the first season in my adulthood because it's one of those shows that has disappeared and is not available on any platform. And so Liesl has seen only the first, maybe part of the second season of Who's the Boss, and that's it. She likes it and wants to see it but can't. Living Dolls has appeared on YouTube only recently, only in August, so who knows how long it's going to stay around, but I'll link to it. And uh, it's only like 12 episodes, but it's very who's the bossy towards the end. Like towards the, the, the writing of who's the boss changed towards the end. Living Dolls is definitely end of the line who's the boss writing. But it's, it's not actually terrible. And it's some interesting people to be able to watch. It was a really unpopular sitcom. And that's just how it is. But Lisa and I love sitcoms, especially 80s sitcoms. For me, it's super nostalgic. For her, she just likes those feel-good kind of old sitcoms, and it's something that she and I do together, which is cool because it's something that my dad and I did together a lot in the in the 80s. And, uh, and Oh, and I should point out, Living Dolls came out towards the end of the year when I was 13. So I was about 13 and a half when it came out. Lisa is currently 13 and a half, so she's watching it at the exact same age that I was when I watched it, which is just kind of interesting. It's neat that we can share that and she can see this as this is what television was for my dad at the exact age that she is now. So that's pretty cool. While we were watching that, uh, something came up and we thought of the show. Oh, one of the characters on the show uh, from uh, Living Dolls talks about she's from Idaho and goes on and on. Uh, And because of that, I said, oh, you've never seen Napoleon Dynamite. And I told her about it, and she's like, I would actually like to see that. So we got Napoleon Dynamite on Amazon Prime and watched that tonight. And Liesl really enjoyed that. That is such a classic, and it's funny to think that that movie came out four years before Liesl was born, so it was already kind of old by the time she was born. So by the time she would ever consider watching it, it was no one was thinking about it anymore. Uh, and so I haven't seen it since before she was born, I'm sure. It was really neat going back and watching that with her. So we had a really nice evening watching things together. Uh, So I did not do as much work uh, filming today as I could have because I took a bit of time to hang out with my daughters. Uh, But it was a very nice Sunday and nice and relaxing. Uh, So today's topic, I'm going to talk. I did this on a short as well. But the people who see the shorts and the people who see the long form show are often quite a bit different. So I'm going to do it here as well. Plus, I just want to mention, if you have not been watching my shorts, please take a moment and go check them out. Like it only takes a second and you can go through and watch there at a maximum of a minute. Some of them are 15 seconds. I have lots of good little tidbits in there and I tend to show where I am and what I'm doing on different days uh, at a different pace and in a different way than I do on here. So some interesting stuff there that you won't get here and lots of stuff here you won't get there. So it's not always a crossover directly. And I think they're kind of fun. I've gotten some good feedback on them, and they definitely help drive the channel a lot. So going and hitting like and whatever on those really does help drive the channel as well, and it only takes a minute. So if you haven't seen those, please do so. It does help. Um, And, uh, of course, if you came here from the shorts, welcome. Before we do the topic, please remember to like and subscribe. If you have any comments, put them below. Always glad to have a conversation. Get in there and talk to others. Talk to me. Find out more about Nicaragua traveling, water, shows, living dolls, whatever. Camera setup. This is the 45mm F1.8 M Zuiko on there uh, on the Olympus. And, uh, of course, the Tascam, which you can see me holding. I don't I don't know if I like holding this, but it's really convenient not to have to have a setup for it. So we're going to see how it sounds. I bet it makes some noise, and I don't like it. But constant experimentation that's part of what this is all about and uh, if you'd like to buy me a coffee and help support the show so that i can afford to get equipment like this that sounds better and better for you guys and beautiful lenses like this you can buy me a coffee i'm going to put that link right here that comes directly to me i do appreciate i get a lot of support from that from you guys and thank you so much and of course please share on social media tell your friends about the show that's how we keep growing all right so it has been asked a number of times and i never think of putting it onto the show but can you drink the water here in nicaragua And 
Quick answer. The answer is just yes. You can drink the water in Nicaragua and most of the surrounding countries. Not a problem. What this comes from is everyone in North America is familiar with Montezuma's Revenge, the parasites that you get in the water in Mexico. They're very common in Mexico. That is a real thing. I don't want to say you can drink the water in Mexico like it's nuts. It's an imaginary thing. No, absolutely not. The water in Mexico is terrible. Um, why is that? I do not know. There's some cultural thing or weather thing or climatic thing or whatever that has created a situation where the water in Mexico is pretty universally not the best. There's a lot of places where you can drink the water, but it's not like broad. It's like, oh, this city, you can drink it or this resort, you can drink it kind of thing. So you have to really check and have some confidence in that. And because it's parasites, you want to be careful with things like brushing your teeth or uh, making soup with it. Of course, you can boil it and do a bunch of things, but you gotta you gotta take some precautions. And people who live in Mexico are often taking medicine to deal with the fact that they're drinking it. And while they're used to it and it doesn't affect them as much, it's a parasite and it does affect them in many cases. So you have to be careful. Once you get south of Mexico, you hit Guatemala and down, you actually don't have those problems. Water treatment is pretty broad or the climatic has changes enough that the well water is safe. I don't know exactly why, but nobody has those problems in any of the other countries. You really can drink the water. Now, a lot of places don't drink the water, so this is worth mentioning. First of all, when you're on the beach anywhere, you often cannot drink the water simply because it's saline because you're so close to the ocean. So be aware, a lot of places don't drink it because it's ocean water. Uh, in the rest of the country, you may get not the best taste coming from a well. A lot of people don't want to drink well water. Uh, city treatment may have an extra amount of chlorine in it. A lot of people don't like it for that reason. It is recommended. If you're going to use city water, don't drink it straight out of the tap. Let it sit for a few seconds so that the bubbles come out of it because that does, yeah, as it clears up, if you get that, cl that cloudy look, that's probably a lot of chlorine. Give it a second. As that dissipates, you're going to have a lot better water and it only takes a minute to what, let it sit that can make a big difference. The biggest thing you have to worry about, and this is true across a lot of Nicaragua and quite a bit of other cities uh, in other countries, but very heavily here in Nicaragua, is that there are a lot of colonial cities and they are still using, in some cases, colonial infrastructure. And that means there could be lead pipes in the ground. And in some rare cases, there's heavy metals in the ground as well that can affect the well water. You can get filters that will take that stuff out, but you have to have your own filters, generally not filtered. That means that things like brushing your teeth or showering or just coming into contact with the water is not going to be any problem at all. Heavy metals become a problem over large t uh, periods of usage. So if you're visiting, it's not going to affect you at all, and the locals drink it all the time. It is not a major problem. Most places, the locals are drinking the local water, and especially in places like Managua, no one worries about bottled water. But when you get out to the colonial cities, Granada, and Leon for sure you're going to drink bottled water most of the time and if you're on the beach up in the mountains you could be back to uh, uh, city water once again so it does depend where you are but culturally it is very common to use bottled water all the time uh, but you do not need to come to Nicaragua and ask every restaurant because I know a lot of expats do this and I understand why they do because if you experience Mexico or you're getting what you're told in the U.S. oh countries that speak Spanish oh my my camera froze and I know why you do it. They're told in North America, everyone gets told, don't drink the water, ask it, you know, you got to check, nothing's safe. And then everyone comes to Nicaragua and thinks that it's Mexico and bugs everyone. Is this filtered water? Is this treated water? Are you getting bottled water? You don't need to ask that. Is your ice made with? No, don't ask just drink it, act like a normal local, don't be weird about it. Once you've stayed here for any amount of time, I've had nobody ever, none of the expats, none of the locals, nobody asks about any of that stuff because you don't need to. The water is fine. All the locals are drinking it. They know it's safe. You can drink it too. Whatever the restaurants are doing, that's fine. You're all set. It's a big lizard running by has caught my attention. Uh, when you go to San Juan del Sur, you're much more likely to get people who are very worried about it, right? And they and the restaurants are used to being asked, are you getting filtered water, filtered water? Don't ask, right? You don't need to know. If you're going to live here, if you're going to be drinking the water all the time, it's different. You may want to get bottled water because you want to make sure that you're not getting any heavy metals because you, you don't have an opportunity to test everywhere you're going to be. In restaurants, most of the time it's bottled anyway, so not a big deal. When you're cooking with it, generally not a big deal. Just if you're going to be drinking at home, you know, I go through gallons a day. Yeah, we use bottled. Plus, it tastes better, right? Plus, we don't have to worry about if the water supply is consistent, right? But, you know, you're going to brush your teeth. You're going to take a shower. Don't worry about getting it in your eyes or in your nose, in your mouth. Just brush your teeth normally. Gargle. If you need to drink some for whatever, don't worry. It's not a problem. Just 
maybe it's not what you want to drink all the time. You're at the gas station. You want to get bottled water to drink. That's fine, right? But you don't have to worry about it. You don't have to. And I've never had someone who's had a, a problem, never heard of anyone having a problem here. It's just it's not really a thing. So, yes, you can absolutely drink the water. And very similar goes for the U.S., right? Uh, the U.S. has better water pressure, slightly better water treatment than most places. It's really good with water, but you know what? We still have issues like Flint. We still have issues like Mississippi, where whole cities have no drinkable water. That doesn't happen in Nicaragua, right? Every city, every village has potable water. Just it may not be the best, so fine. But there's no large areas that are just completely without potable water. That's really not a thing. So actually, it's slightly better than the U.S. Would you drink the water in the United States? Of course you would most of the time, but just like anywhere else in the United States, there's a really good chance you're going to choose bottled water. Two, you're going to evaluate the local water and choose appropriately. It's, it's not that much different. So bottom line, don't worry about the water here, but bottled water is just fine. I can't believe how often the camera here is overheating. This is getting to be a bit crazy. Um, I'm starting to have to do this, and it's really not that hot. Like, I'm comfortable outside. This is a really nice day, and I'm having to take the camera into some pretty serious air conditioning, put it in front of the air conditioner, get the body temperature down, run out, hook it up, record. I get about five to ten minutes before it overheats, and I have to do the whole thing again, and it takes a good 30 minutes to get it cooled down again before I can record. But in doing that, I have managed to offload some of the videos, check out the audio coming off of the task cam, and this sounds pretty fantastic. So I like how this is turning out, even though it's not the best process. So I'm still, still holding this here, but that really does seem to work because it's pretty close to my mouth, and the task cam has amazing mics on a really good preamp, and I don't have, to, and syncing it is so easy with Final Cut Pro that it's just, that just makes things so good. And I've heard some of those features are starting to come into some of the other platforms, but Final Cut really has the, the voice isolation. And let me tell you, if I turn the voice isolation off, the traffic is just, it's loud. And the air conditioners are loud. And the echo of my voice is pretty significant. And it cuts all of that out. And it sounds so good. It's not perfect, but it's really good. I'm looking forward to the new space because it's going to be uh, surrounded by a lot of greenery. There's a lot less highway noise. And so the actual amount that voice isolation would have to do will be way down. And my voice dynamic, the 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 disparity between my voice level and the background will be much higher so it should sound way better I may not even need to use the voice isolation or at least I get to dial it back because it does make me just a little bit robotic anyway that is our day that is our topic drink the water don't worry about it there's no Montezuma's revenge here and in any of the bordering countries right it's absolutely fine to drink the water in Costa Rica Guatemala Honduras whatever it's fine um, but beaches and stuff, of course, just all just use common sense. Don't worry about it. If the locals are drinking it, it's safe for you too, especially as a tourist. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe. If you'd like to support the channel, you know all the things you can do. Please give us some support. I will see all of you tomorrow.